it is hard to talk about Kardec without considering the Professor Hippolyte, the Professor Hippolyte, who he was really before. Kardec is his pen name. Kardec was a scholar. His background was in education uh, from the beginning. From a very young age, he was uh, sent to Ver Iverdon to study with Pestalozzi. He was one of the brightest students that Pestalozzi had. He has a lot of knowledge in terms of not only math, biology, astronomy, that was very uh, common in that time. So he was this guy that, if we have to compare nowadays, was someone that would be like, I don't know, a professor of uh, this big university here that we have in the US, such as Johns Hopkins, Yale, Harvard University. So he was very respectful educator in that time. Kardec started working with spiritism when he first got in contact with the table turning, a phenomenon that has traveled from the US to Europe. So some of his friends asked him to investigate as he was known for his scientific background and his rationality and reason, uh, which he did not really want to do because he was busy with work and everything else, but eventually they twist his arm. He starts to investigate this phenomena. saw that a table could not be, you know, answering questions by itself because he said a table doesn't have a brain. How can a table reason and give us reasonable answers to questions? So that's where he began his idea that an intelligent effect must have an intelligent cause. Thus, he began to become curious and wanting to know, well, if that's the case, what is behind that table? contact with many different people, many different mediums, uh, in many different regions, even different countries. So from that point, he started writing the same questions and sending to different mediums and obtaining back the same answers. So that way he could uh, certify that the answers was coming from the same source the spiritual realm. He received communication from all over the world, including the U.S. They weren't just messages about everyday life, about who this person's gonna marry or that person's gonna marry. It was more messages about humanity, growth, spirituality, understanding humanity in terms of loving one another, brothers and sisters as equals before God. Kardec saw that it was a, a very enriching, and, and I mean, it, all the information that the spirits were providing were opening a completely new world before him. He started compiling the answers and started uh, asking himself some questions at the meetings. And at a certain point, he received a message from uh, the, the spirits what he, he uh, the spirit call himself a, a spiritual guide, Zephyrus, and uh, and this spirit told him that there was mu much more behind the the answers, that there was a, a whole new doctrine there, and that's when he decided to start organizing the questions and answers, compiling them, and uh, and started preparing what ended up being the spirit's book the first edition that was published in 1857. The seminal work in Spiritism from whence every other Spiritist book later comes from, uh, including the Spiritist Codification, which are the first five books that Kardec himself edited or put them together. Quando 
foi firmar o livro, ele estabeleceu uma interrogação. Se colocasse Denis Arrivaio, as pessoas iriam ler pela fama do pedagogo, do escritor. Mas se o livro aparecesse com a autoria de um anônimo, ele venceria pela sua qualidade intrínseca. E foi o primeiro gesto de renúncia deste homem notável. So he didn't want to mix what he was what he had been gathering together with this body of knowledge with his professional career. So it had been revealed to him that in a previous life as a druid, he had the name Allan Kardec. So he adopted that name as a pen name, which at that time was quite popular for many authors who didn't want to out themselves to use a pen name. Whether you believe in the religious part, religiosity part, or the scientific part, or the philosophical part, I think every person uh, owes to himself or herself a chance of reading Kardec just for the logic, because it's such an amazing form of writing, of organizing one's thoughts. When we talk about the codification, we are talking about a body of knowledge where those um, uh, knowledge go uh, touching everything that we know about the universe, about ourselves as a spirit incarnate in a physical body, about you know happiness and about also what's going on after we, we, we die, um, life in, in the other side as well. When he was invited to organize the uh, spirits book, some of the questions reflect so much this deep interest of him in the betterment of us all. And one of the main questions, it's question 919, uh, which asks, what is the most efficient way to be pleasing to God and to resist the draw of evil? Because the answer to the question is, uh, know thyself. Kardec revealing the spirits that lived here, and when they got back to the spirit realm, they reported to us, I live it this way, and that's the way that I find in myself. So we can learn from somebody else's experience that can help us to make a decision in our life. And it's very, very valuable because it's something very tangible that we can learn from. See that there's a father figure in there, he's not only gather information about people, about the spirits to tell us. He's really, truly care about those people that are there, the spirits that are there suffering. There are some writings of him later on uh, in his life when he says that charity is really the main focus of what spiritism should be. And when, when reading that book once again, we feel that Kardec really strived to live like that. Because he was the one that said that without charity, there is no salvation. About all of this, we understand that charity, compassion for our fellow beings is essential for us to become a good spiritist. I would say that the greatest inheritance that Kardec left to us, the greatest legacy, was his own example as a man, as a disciple of Jesus, as a forerunner of this new era that we are living now and harvesting all the benefits of it. And, uh, but most of all, the example of selflessness. Kardec time, there is the, this um, great story that happened in that time that uh, is entitled The Book Binder. And one particular evening, he received a book in the mail, I believe it was, and it was with, attached with a letter from a young man who basically explained to him that he was uh, deeply depressed and was on the verge of com going to commit suicide. When he was went to 
at the bridge to jump in, <laughs> and kill himself. So he put his hand to, to, to jump and he put his hand in a book and the book was the Spirit's book. And when he opened up the book, um, he began to read it. He was very moved by it and he decided not to take his own life. So he wrote to Kardec to say thank you, basically. It was that reminder that, hey, if I'm helping one person, if I'm changing the lives of one person, if I'm saving one life, then all of this is worth it. It's about learning for ourselves, for our lives, for what we can do to our lives to make better, to help people and help ourselves. And reading the books, really try to understand the, the meaning of the teachings, Jesus' teachings, will help us to set the right goals in our life, to design our north, where I want to be. But not, not only design the north, but how to get there.